Hi, uh, my name is Ariel Jatib. I'm one of the founders of a company called Stackpoint Cloud that was recently acquired by NetApp and now forms the foundation for uh, NKS, where I am one of the team members. Uh, today, I'm going to walk you through the process for creating a cluster on NKS. And so, uh, up at the top of this list, and you'll notice I have uh, clusters uh, deployed at a variety of providers. Um, you uh, kick off the process and you start that by selecting uh, one of the providers here. One of the advantages to using NKS is that we provide a, a uniform experience across providers. So if I'm going to deploy a cluster at AWS, uh, that experience is uh, similar to one where I'm going to deploy on EKS, right, where we automatically kind of uh, make some selections for you around VPC and subnets. Uh, and then you can always go ahead and kind of uh, update that or uh, use one of the other uh, solutions. Again, if you need to customize what, it, what your cluster makes up in the way of node sizes, you can come in here and select different node sizes. If I know it's going to require uh, more nodes, I can uh, uh, worker nodes, I can go ahead and update that here. So uh, we make some intelligent uh, uh, default decisions for you and then uh, you can come in and customize all that. You can map a cluster to a workspace. Uh, you can add your own SSH key. Uh, we fill out a cluster name for you. You can refresh that or customize that. We make of, of, uh, three versions of Kubernetes available to you. Uh, normally we release uh, new versions of Kubernetes in about five days. You can also select uh, different versions uh, or different OS's to deploy. We make available three versions of Container Linux slash CoreOS uh, or uh, Ubuntu available. Let's go ahead and select Ubuntu here. We also deploy other sol uh, open source solutions associated with the project like the dashboard, etcd, and Helm uh, uh, on the solution. Uh, there's this solutions gallery uh, that provides you additional uh, tooling that can help you opera operationalize your cluster. Uh, things like Istio and Prometheus, uh, EFK, uh, Linkerd, there's an autoscaler. Uh, there's also a trusted charts repository, which are all uh, Helm charts that are submitted by the community, usually by the vendors uh, who uh, uh, want to be included in the gallery of solutions here. And you can also uh, map to uh, chart repos uh, that you host either on GitHub or in a private uh, uh, Git repository. So let's go ahead and uh, select Istio here. I get, notice I get to pick a couple plugins. I'll hit save. Go ahead and hit submit. That's going to kick off the process for uh, creating the cluster. And so in about 10 minutes, this is going to be all ready to go. I'm going to jump over. There it is. Let's go to this cluster that I built a little bit earlier today on AWS. The other thing that we make really easy for you to uh, do in managing this cluster, right? So now I've uploaded, I've created this cluster. Uh, let's see how long this one took. 1037. Oh, I added, I added a node uh, here. So originally this took about 11 minutes to build. And later on, I added another node to that. And that's some of the functionality that we make available to you via the control plane. Things like uh, click button upgrade, right? So here's this cluster and there's two upgrades available to it. I can upgrade to uh, the minor minor revision 111.3 or I can go up to the latest release from the project 112.1. And again, I just select that. There's a, I can add uh, multiple masters here to this cluster. I can add, uh, earlier I added a, a third node to this uh, worker pool. You can also create specific worker uh, node pools to handle different spe specific kinds of workloads. So those are just some of the ways that we make it easier for you to uh, manage your uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, and deploy them.